Just a brief presentation. Um, I'm the advisor for digital policy of the Minister of Education and Research in Italy, Mr. Uh, Francesco Profumo. I've been hired uh, in February, so um, I, uh, I, <clears throat> uh, I'm a kind of uh, uh, new, uh, new, new bit for the, 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 the Italian uh, public administration, and it's uh, a really interesting ex experience. Uh, the, my main uh, uh, topic as assistant of the minister was uh, the, 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 uh, the writing and the, the, the creation of the process to build the um, digital agenda, the Italian digital agenda. And one of the main parts of the Italian digital agenda is about smart city, that we call it in Italian uh, comunità intelligenti, so uh, smart communities. And uh, I will explain why. Uh, then I'm collaborating with the Topics Consortium here in Turin and uh, with the Nexa Center for Internet Society of the Polytechnic of Turin. So the, 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 the background, uh, the, this presentation is divided in four parts and uh, I will start with a brief background on uh, big data and uh, the importance of data in our life, in our everyday life. Um, the, the idea of uh, using data as a service so that data are uh, one of the most important part in the application and in general in new uh, ICT architecture. Uh, then I will talk a little bit about open data, this is something that that I'm uh, doing, uh, I've been doing every day since uh, the, the last two or three years, and it's one of the main part of the digital agenda, the Italian digital agenda too. And uh, then uh, I will uh, go into the uh, Comunità Intelligente, the smart communities, uh, uh, trying to explain uh, how uh, we build the smart community framework in Italy, that it's a kind of uh, peculiar to the, our country. Uh, of course, you can just say, uh, say something and ask me something, whatever you want. So, uh, the first, uh, I, I usually show this picture that is a mock-up uh, published on the National Geographic a couple of years ago. And uh, I think it's really interesting because uh, it gives us the, the idea of uh, um, browsing reality and browsing information. So we live in a world where uh, information is a kind of layer uh, between us and their physical reality. And it's really interesting also to see the picture on top of the image where we see a man with the handlet, with the smartphone, the first one, a man with the glasses where it probably projected the, the, the information and the man just uh, himself because probably is something inside our brain. The idea is that as we browse the re physical reality, we can browse also the uh, digital reality. And uh, it's interesting because it's mixed, uh, uh, all the information displayed on the, on the image uh, comes from public data, private data, so Starbucks, for example, and uh, also, for example, the sky, so the star on the sky. It's, uh, uh, all these applications are almost uh, available on the, some app store or Android store. Um, Web squared. Uh, I really um, like this uh, definition of Timor O'Reilly because uh, uh, I think it gives the, the scope of uh, um, what data and the, the use of the, the production and the use of data are in our uh, uh, everyday life. Uh, the idea is that we have this new sensory input, so sensor everywhere, that create cooperating data subsystems. So the idea that every different system system produce data that cooperate with each other and create implicit meaning. So they cooperate uh, sometimes without our um, explicit, uh, um, um, uh, without some explicit purpose, but they, they just uh, uh, maybe 
one system check on another system and they create some uh, implicit and not necessarily explicit meaning. A credit card system, for example, try to find frauds uh, even without a specific, uh, um, uh, a specific uh, supervision of men. Just they check different systems and say, okay, this is something wrong, but how they say it's wrong and they give the information to the human being. But, and then, then check uh, uh, the, the, the process. But the first part of the process is implicit. Um, of course, we, we leave uh, information shadow on the net uh, when you use credit card or telepass with cars uh, or a GPS system. Uh, and all this thing, uh, all this uh, uh, data and system create a sort of collective mind. I think that we, we have to, 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 to take this point of view when we um, consider uh, smart cities. So the idea of this real-time collective mind, because everything is in real time, that's also uh, extremely important. All these data are called in the last uh, uh, half, uh, a year and a half, uh, big data. Uh, big data seems to be something really big, uh, massive in the amount of money they can generate and also in the market they can open. Um, this study is a McKinsey study on, in, um, published in um, uh, 2011. And, uh, I, I think what it's really interesting is the, the idea that uh, new jobs are created uh, related to managing, analyzing data, and uh, in the US, of course, but also in, uh, in Europe, uh, in, in Asia, and uh, in, the, in South America. Um, it's interesting to see that uh, uh, $600 to buy a disk drive that can store all the world's music. Uh, so the idea that the storage is really, really cheap, uh, information are available on the net, uh, and we can uh, analyze a huge amount of data like never before. And uh, all this uh, data and the, 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 our possibility to, to, to analyze that uh, produce um, big market uh, that is calculated in strange way, I think, but still are the number are impressive. So 600 billion potential annual consumer surplus for using personal location data globally. And uh, uh, a lot of 1.5 million more data savvy manager needed to take full advantage of big data in the US. This is the calculation of McKinsey. That means that probably in the future we will see these uh, uh, skills, uh, data uh, skills related to managing data as one of the main uh, position, opening position in the ICT sector. That also is uh, uh, important uh, in the framework of smart cities. But uh, uh, all this uh, technology, uh, uh, the, 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 I think that the, the, new, the, the good news is that uh, this technology are, uh, and the technology that can, uh, we can use to manage the data are uh, extremely cheap. Um, Larry Lessig, uh, the, the, the creator of Creative Commons, I think you, you, you know him very well, um, used this uh, um, uh, this uh, this uh, idea that uh, um, everybody can take part in a uh, um, uh, creative process. So the idea is that we can be part of the production process. And also uh, Joachim Bankler uh, that wrote this, The Wealth of Networks book that I think it's really important uh, um, to, to understand the economics of digital goods uh, and digital networks. Uh, the idea is everybody can, I think, can authoring his or her own life. And I think that this can be one of the, the key words for the building of smart cities. So the idea that citizens can build their own life. They can, can interact with the city and do something directly from uh, by themselves. Why? Because uh, we have this uh, 
in, in the in, in the physical world, in order to, to, to be productive, to produce things, uh, we use cathedrals. I, I, I choose to to use the, the image of the Lingotto factory here in Turin, uh, because uh, if we compare, for example, to Facebook, to big company, but one is the physical company that need uh, the army, the army to, to work, so physical things, uh, iron and uh, trains in order to transport uh, and big uh, factory, uh, very expensive, very rigid production process, and not everybody can uh, be the, 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 the managing director, for example, something like that, because it's actually big and very, 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 very rigid. And in the digital world, uh, the production process is more similar to the bazaar. So it's uh, uh, small, uh, even uh, a single student can create something that is uh, economically uh, similar to uh, the, the fiat factory, but just with uh, is a PC uh, or is a server uh, in a in a really liquid in a li liquid way. Uh, also, the idea is so the idea is that the, 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 all the, in the innovation process has been democratized. Eric von Ippel wrote this very interesting book, Democratizing Innovation, when he said that uh, the, the the most innovative things nowadays, maybe it's uh, it's maybe too much, but it's mm, it's something true that the most of the innovation comes from outside the big organization so come from uh, just a single person that uh, hack the system that can uh, produce something using digital technology and digital data we also see the social media revolution and they say that reading facebook is much more interesting than reading google has uh, reading uh, uh, a book is more interesting than reading a guide so social media are producer of data, but data that are that tell stories, and <clears throat> the importance of managing this data is that we have more uh, more information. We we also have a semantic layer, and uh, <clears throat> sorry, we get to, we we get into the real life of people. Of course, uh, uh, data are uh, value, and uh, he's Hal Varian, the chief economist of Google, that teaches us that data can be uh, put together to create information and then maybe knowledge, and uh, knowledge can be sell in the market really easily uh, because of profiling and all these kind of things. So data are growing, and data are a growing value. Uh, Data, um, because of this, uh, this process, uh, uh, can be used as a service <coughs> because applications are uh, lean. We, we, we see all these uh, uh, small apps in our smartphone, and they are really lean piece of code that rely on huge data, but that they don't have data inside. They just consume, they, they, they take data from somewhere, and uh, um, and deliver the service to to to, to citizen to users. Uh, I take I took some big data markets, so there are inter intermediary of data like Factual in UK in the US. <coughs> data market in um, in Europe uh, so they are collect they are market for data they collect data they normalize this they manage data from different sources and they give this data to this uh, uh, cloud of applications that using RESTful API can take the data and not adding the data that's it's really interesting because I can uh, take data from uh, a, a, a broad scope of, of sources without having the, the, the cost to, 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 to storage them. All this, uh, uh, so if, if the data are used uh, as a service, also the computational resources are used as a service. So we have this uh, idea that uh, application uh, doesn't have any more data inside, but they don't use uh, uh, um, computing resource anymore. 
Of course, that is something uh, um, uh, that has a, a big impact in the in the computing uh, uh, computing world because the resources are services trading in real time, so I can take some the resource from one point to another point in the world. Um, SLA uh, is property, property is not more physical, but it's a service level agreement, and uh, the brokering systems uh, are the intermediary also in, in this kind of world. So uh, if uh, we use the uh, I, uh, ISO pile, we, we see that all the level are um, um, uh, uh, are managed by intermediaries. Okay, there are new business model uh, related to delivering data and not just uh, or, or managing or delivering data to uh, small apps. But data are less available when siloed in single <coughs> in single places. <coughs> in fact, uh, uh, the problem is that when we when the number of data are growing, we need a new way to manage this data. And the, the what say what is called linked data, or semantic web, is a, a new. Um, uh, a new model to, 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 to organize the data. Um, uh, here we see a simple graph, so the idea of having graph, not more databases, because the, the data are uh, moving very fast. We cannot storage, we cannot even uh, have a strong control on the data, so we focus on the link and the graph they can create. So we can have this uh, different network and this uh, 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 I should quit smoking, sorry. And this, this is um, um, a representation of uh, data management that it's pretty similar to internet. So the, the idea is that we have uh, this uh, small net uh, that means small graph of information, companies, institutions, libraries, uh, citizen, and geo geospatial information that are typical layer when we uh, create um, a, 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 a new info space. And uh, uh, this net uh, are, uh, are connected to, to each other uh, and we can uh, create new connection also among these different uh, uh, different networks. So it's 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 a uh, it's a network of network. Not only the, the physical connection is a network network. The computational connection is a network of network. The data are a network of network, and the general architecture is a network of networks. And they can be mixed on the fly. So I, I, I don't need them anymore. I just need uh, an address to take them and mix them. The linked data paradigm, this is DBpedia. Uh, DBpedia is a, st a structured version of uh, Wikipedia. Uh, and um, it's one of the most important resources for uh, linked data. And the, uh, DBpedia basically provides the information about uh, uh, everything in Wikipedia, but uh, structured in uh, XLM format, so we can use it for application. We can take this information <coughs> and use it uh, uh, in a machine read. They are provided in a machine readable format. <coughs> a big part of this data available are public data. Public data are um, mines, mines of value, because they are produced, they are already paid by the civil society, and they are there in the public administration on different level. And we can take this data because they are actually our data, and use it to, uh, to create new tools and new application. 140 uh, billion is the, 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 the annual value of uh, uh, public sector information in uh, European Union. And it's uh, uh, almost half than the calculation for the, for the US. So we are talking about a huge, probably a, a huge market. And they can be the raw material in order to create the layer that uh, we saw before. Uh, these data are in, inside the public administration, but Tim Berners-Lee a couple of years ago said, please give us the raw data. Why? Because the raw data are uh, free, raw data are pure. Raw data are not, uh, <clears throat> are 
of course cheap also. Uh, but we can create the link with the raw data. I mean, this is maybe uh, an oversimplification, but the idea is please give us the possibility to create our meaning. And uh, that, that makes sense uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the idea of the bazaar and the idea of uh, every single uh, um, citizen can be a producer. So if I have enough uh, uh, data, I can create my meaning on top of the, of the data available produced by the public administration. Uh, this is my definition of what open data is. Uh, so it's a model to extract value from public sector information by using the data to build new tools and create innovative services. Uh, the, the, I, I will underline using. So the idea uh, open data is something that makes uh, data available in order to be used by people. And that's, I think, it's really important also in the smart city environment. So smart city is open if the, uh, if the city produces data that citizens can use in order to change the city, actually. And not also the city, but uh, probably also people and organizations that live inside the city. But the, the, the most important thing is using data. Of course, it's a paradigm that had uh, a great success, especially in the in UK, in US, but all around the world. Uh, President Obama in the first uh, mandate <coughs> was the, the, the first um, uh, public administration, big public administration, who created the, uh, the first open data website in order to strengthen uh, our democracy. And <coughs> Is democracy actually, and the but also the UK and uh, I, I use this two picture because there are mm, two different uh, political point of view. Uh, so the, the, the Obama said to, to 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 make our democracy more efficient, and uh, uh, Mr. Cameron said uh, to empower citizen. Anyway, the idea is that uh, if I uh, data are a tool to be more. Um, uh, to be more uh, more powerful in the um, relation among uh, citizens, uh, companies, and uh, uh, public administration. Why we do open data? Uh, for uh, uh, make uh, the, the, the public administration accountable, and uh, accountability is something extremely important. Uh, it has a big uh, political meaning, and it's a word that it's really difficult to, to, to translate in Italian. That is normal, probably. Uh, exactly, we, we don't have a word. Exactly, and it's really significant. We don't have a word in Italian to, to translate accountability. And that's, that's true. Uh, um, but the idea is, OK, you, uh, you are in charge to do something, and uh, please uh, make yourself accountable so we can check what, what, what you did. Um, if we have accountability, there can be transparency. Otherwise, no, because uh, I can be transparent if I have something to show to the, to the citizen. Um, if there is a real transparency, uh, that can start some kind of collaboration because there is trust. The idea of trust um, comes uh, among the two words, transparency and collaboration. And if there is a true trust, uh, we can start some kind of participation. Participation means, uh, for example, that citizens can build law together. But in order to, 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 to get there, we, we have to build all the other, all the other steps. So starting from measuring things, be accountable, be transparent, uh, creating uh, trust in citizens, and then ask them to collaborate and maybe to participate in the process. So it, it's, it's not trivial. It's, it's not just one, one, uh, one step and uh, I show my budget and then uh, everybody can participate. It's not exactly like that. It is also a big... Uh, um, economic uh, uh, economic uh, meaning because uh, uh, making data available uh, foster innovation cooperation and competition and all these words are not so uh, uh, so famous so used in the Italian uh, discourse usually especially competition uh, because uh, uh, making data available uh, means uh, that also the public the private sector for example can do some kind of public services 
and uh, <coughs> uh, making data available uh, uh, increase the, the, the digital commons. So the idea of having this uh, uh, commons good that are digital and uh, uh, that uh, create uh, uh, actually grow. And information is the currency of democracy. That's something that we didn't invent with the digital technology, something that has been uh, always true. Uh, some example of application that can be uh, created by using uh, data and mixing public and private data, bike sharing map, very, very uh, used in, in Europe and uh, all around the world. It's, it's interesting, I use this picture, it's old, but it's a UK-based company, it's based in London, that uh, they did this uh, map for, it for Italy. So fortunately now there are several Italian apps, but that was the first one and it, was, it started from the UK. So it's important for a small country like Italy not uh, uh, stay, uh, not wait too much, otherwise uh, the other big or small company coming from uh, abroad uh, will use our data and deliver services for, for us. And, and Google is, I mean, the, 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 the main uh, character in this, in this drama, but can be even more... It, it is, it is, it is actually worse than that because, uh, for example, Italy doesn't have a, a, a strategy uh, for... Um, how can I say, uh, for a strategic data, uh, I'm speaking about the army or the, 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 um, uh, the agency, uh, the public agency, uh, and it's particularly um, strange compared, for example, to United States or China, and um, the, uh, the biggest provider of intelligence uh, services for data, for example, for fiscal frauds, uh, or counter-terrorism are American or even Chinese. And so a, a small country like Italy has to ask American in order to do counter-terrorism for them. And that's, that's something that starts to be really, really, um, it's an issue. It's, it it starts to be a big issue. Uh, I usually divide the, the, the application we can have with uh, data available in two main group, uh, the transparency application, the information services. The transparency application are uh, application like um, uh, where does my money go in, uh, goes in, 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 in UK or open spending. Um, open policy does this open parliamento. It's a very interesting uh, tool to monitor the, 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 the public assembly, the parliament, uh, the councils. We try to uh, uh, to ask how our politician here in Turin to use uh, this open police tool, but it's tough, it's difficult. Or maybe to monitor the public procurement. Uh, we had uh, a new this new law in Italy that said that everything uh, uh, that is spended by the, the public administration should be open and should be accessible. That can be <coughs> extremely important. Uh, info services, uh, just three examples, transportation, the, the London tube in the, in the picture, uh, environment for, for example, this is for garbage and sandbag emission map, and cultural heritage, this is an interesting application exactly in, uh, developed in Turin. Um, other example for food, uh, for kids, <coughs> environment, transportation, and in general data visualization. Uh, all this uh, uh, application can be made by even a single, a single student if data are uh, easily accessible, easily available, or they can be used by, for example, association or even government in order to create uh, better policy or to propose new policies. And uh, that's what uh, uh, the, the Italian government, it's really, um, um, the Italian government tried to, to, to push uh, in the framework of smart cities. Okay, so I just uh, very, very briefly, try to explain the architecture of, of, the, of the smart city that has been published in the last um, uh, digital agenda law, the, 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 the um, 
Crescita 2.0, the CRE that is in discussion uh, in the Parliament now. So the, the first step was the, 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 I'm sorry for the Italian here, but... So the, the first step was this uh, bandy for uh, research and innovation. So the idea was taking uh, the, the, the European resources that is not so used in Italy and try to put it all these resources in just one big project that is a smart city. Why we choose a smart city? Because a smart city is everything. Smart city is the, is the, the, the life of everybody. You can, uh, uh, you can think of smart city for welfare, energy, mobility, uh, education, uh, tourism, government, uh, inclusion, cultural heritage, telecommunications. So the idea of in just one big box where all the research uh, uh, effort and their money goes. And uh, these uh, uh, different applications are based on an architecture <coughs> that uh, um, uh, has different uh, points. Uh, the first one is, is, is a, an information management architecture, what we call it the smart architecture. Uh, the smart procurement is the way to finance all this project. Smart finance is uh, um, impact bonds, crowdfunding, public-private uh, um, partnership. So the idea of having a new way to finance uh, even uh, social innovation, in fact, uh, one of the part of the, the, the of this uh, um, bid was for especially for uh, social innovation, smart governance, open data, and smart monitoring. This is another important thing that we create uh, a monitoring system with the National Statistical Institute. <clears throat> that try to monitor not only the, uh, the effectiveness of um, uh, the project financed, but also uh, the impact. The idea is mo monitoring the impact, so monitoring how this, this money uh, uh, really change life of people. Uh, that is a kind of long, but uh, uh, so the vision is that the city and, and the big city are the, the better um, way to, 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 to think about innovation because uh, it's a, a trend that uh, is uh, changing um, the, 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 uh, the way people live, uh, not only in Italy but uh, all around the world. Um, one of the main objects was to promote a social innovation agenda, so the idea of financing projects that can create uh, social innovation, not technological innovation, but social innovation. So technology used to uh, um, uh, help people in uh, uh, analogical problems like um, aging population or, or, or national uh, um, uh, health system. Uh, to, to create uh, um, innovation policies that are accountable for citizens, one of the main problems is to explain how people, uh, how a small, unfortunately, a small part of our taxes go to uh, research and development. And so if, if, if we are able to, 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 to show to the people that this money go for uh, maybe having a, a, a clear city um, uh, or uh, um, helping people to to living in, in, in a better way, uh, it's much more easier to, to get uh, uh, other money. And it's also the framework of uh, the Horizon 2020 project that is the big uh, frame, European framework. And uh, the last thing is that it's uh, a collective action. So uh, the, the idea of the smart city, uh, and uh, the, the, that's why we call it uh, uh, communities and not city, because we don't have city in Italy, we have small city. We don't have uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, not even in New York. We have small community, uh, for example, in Emilia Romagna or in Veneto or in Sicilia. We have this uh, uh, small, uh, uh, town but that are strongly connected to each other so we have to to, 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 to change a little bit the, the point of view how many minutes I have I think um, the city are really really uh, a, a good place in order to catch the, the, the emerging social need uh, it's big uh, technological infrastructure to, 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 to invest in 
and it's a way in its place where uh, both public and private sector can co-invest with the civil society. And in, in this context, I like to stress just this idea. So we created the Statuto delle Comunità Intelligenti. If you, if you read the law, there is this strange word, and it was really, really tough to explain to all the lawyers and the, and the public administration and the parliaments what means uh, uh, smart citizenship. Uh, we did not define what is smart citizenship, the smart citizenship, but uh, we want to, 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 to put it in the law. So the idea is that every single uh, city that wants to have the money from the central government has to participate in the process of uh, uh, defining what is the smart citizenship. Uh, in defining the statuto of uh, the, the charter, we call it the charter of uh, smart communities. What does it mean? We hope that in the charter there was a, a technological part, but also that will be a, a more um, a definition of uh, rights, a definition of inclusion, for example, one of the main problems, we had a lot, a lot of discussion with uh, uh, people with disabilities, for example, because uh, they are really, really worried about this idea of having city with lead, uh, with display, with uh, uh, things that are not necessarily helping them to live better. Uh, so that's the main problem. And uh, um, Every, so the idea is that we have this uh, charter of smart citizenship at the national level and every single uh, communities uh, will um, uh, customize the charter for their own need. Um, there are uh, a vision for the smart procurement, the smart finance, that it's the crowdfunding. For the first time we are the second nation up, uh, after the United States that we have a law for the crowdfunding. Uh, of course, the smart governance is open data and the government as a platform, so what I said in the first part of the presentation. And the smart monitoring, so the idea of smartness uh, is something that has an impact. And how we can measure the impact in a very, very different way, uh, it's a challenge in itself, but it's not just uh, GPD, but GDP, but it's also um, uh, measurement of uh, way of la living and uh, uh, things like that. Uh, that's the, 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 the architecture, but uh, I don't want to go into these things. We, we call this uh, the, the, the smart city platform. So it's a central platform where uh, all the process, uh, uh, all, all the project uh, developed in Italy will have uh, um, uh, a, a kind of um, um, uh, they, they, they make, they make themselves uh, uh, accessible to other administration. We, uh, the idea is promoting reuse of uh, best practice, uh, uh, connecting in, in a way the, the best practice in Italy. And uh, uh, we will have a central, uh, a central government in the agency for the uh, Digital Italy, this new agency. And uh, we will have a technical committee uh, that's something new in, uh, in Italy, but I think that um, uh, all this process cannot be managed without uh, uh, the civil society, the representative, the, the multi-stakeholder, uh, a way to, to create a multi-stakeholder governance. So innovation, the, the, the key word are innovation, inclusion, cooperation and competition, participation and uh, uh, progress. Um, I like to, 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 to finish with the idea of uh, the, the third paradise of Michelangelo Pistoletto. And he said that the first paradise is the nature, the second paradise is the, the, the technical progress. Uh, but both paradises are not enough. We need a third one that is the, 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 uh, the linking between uh, nature and uh, technical progress. So it's, it's, it's the middle circle inside the, the other two. I think that uh, we can believe or not, but everything at the end of the day is really changing. Thank you. That's it.
book and the, the, the last book was written and we have a really restricted... Uh, I'm sorry, I was late, so... Io ho letto il documento Crescita 2.0, l'ho trovato un documento molto pragmatico, pragmatico, cioè visto da dove arriviamo se riuscissimo a fare anche il 70%, il 50% sarei già contento, quindi anche se poi si può prestare anche a critiche di di a volte semplicistiche affermazioni, ma questo io deduco che non avendo la visibilità del lavoro fatto dietro ho piena fiducia che questo vada avanti. Ma vorrei fare una domanda, detto questo, questo apprezzamento, vorrei fare una domanda che si ricollega un po' all'immagine iniziale della cattedrale del bazar. Sì. In quel bazar eh, io non sono riuscito a distinguere i building della Google, dei big players, perché non sono visibili, però ci sono. Allora la domanda è, se nella value chain, I'm sorry, I'm talking in Italian, maybe I will switch in English. If we look at the value chain of this big data, we are the producer. Now the question is, which is the warranty that the big player, players are going to put their hands on this value? For instance, in the smart city context, I've been following Torino this issue quite closely. A lot of doubts come from the fact that the big role is played by big corporation that, uh, that envisage these opportunities as a platform, quite a free platform to make their, their, their development. So I'm not the one that stay steady because of, uh, because, uh, of, uh, of uh, concern on traveling towards the direction. But from a government standpoint, I would say there is any idea of putting in place a kind of infrastructure by which this risk is minimized? Thanks. Thank you for, uh, th thank you for the question. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a big issue. I think that we cannot, uh, Um, uh, we cannot fight against Google. They will take all the information they will find everywhere uh, and they will make value on, on, on that. But what we can do is lowering the barrier to assess the information. So if we lower the barrier enough, everybody can use the information. Maybe they, they, they won't, but uh, they can. Actually, the, the, the situation was, uh, especially in Italy, that big player access information because they have a big brand. They go to, for example, uh, the, the, the managing director of the agency of territory, and they say, I'm Google, so I would like to have uh, this, this kind of information, for example, transport information. And um, if uh, uh, data and uh, talking about data, if data are uh, difficult to access, all the big organizations can have it. If data are easily accessible, big organizations are taken by default, but maybe also small uh, maybe association or, or small company can also take this information. As a government, the idea, the architecture is based on this platform that will uh, uh, make all the data created in the single process in Italy available. So the, the idea of the decree is that if you take money from the state uh, for a specific project, provided private intellectual property, provided different kind of, uh, of um, constraint, you need to put the data on this platform. Not, not actually the data, but the link uh, maybe to the, to, 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 the, to the resource on this platform in order to make this resource visible, uh, accessible, and available to everybody. 
uh, that's one point of view. The other point of view is that we, we have also to promote uh, innovation policy and so it's uh, not possible to create smart city without a big corporation. Um, or at least uh, we cannot uh, um, uh, miss the opportunity to take the money from them for our territory. So uh, we, we welcome IBM and Cisco and Microsoft doing project uh, in Italy, uh, but uh, we hate close project uh, and especially my fear is that we we have this uh, a matrix and this uh, analytics tool only for uh, the public administration itself. So the idea of Cruscotto, I think it's really, really risky, it's terrible. Uh, because uh, uh, we, the, 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 there is a really tiny line uh, that uh, divide uh, participation and control. And we need to be really aware of this and try to, to make this uh, to stay on the participation part and not I take all the information in order to be a kind of uh, metropolis life, a metropolis uh, uh, framework. And in, in the decree we, we try to, with this charter of smart citizenship, with this, the platform, to uh, create the institution, institutional framework. And uh, then depends of course on, on, the, on the execution, so the idea is that. Sì, okay. È molto pragmatica, però ehm, eh, in Italia praticamente l'accesso a internet è tra i più costosi del mondo. Eh, qua, nelle varie programmi dello Stato c'è anche l'accessibilità economica a tutti o bisogna sempre passare dalle compagnie telefoniche che sono una lobby ormai? Eh, cioè non, non, è, non è facile avere la, cioè non avere la banda larga rispetto agli altri paesi è un limite pazzesco sia per il singolo cittadino ma soprattutto per le, per le aziende e Torino che è una delle città più avanzate da questo punto di vista comunque non ha ancora quindi non oso immaginare la Sicilia la, altri, altri mm. um, so the, the access of, to the broadband connection so the connectivity problem okay. we have this two paradigms one is the free Wi-Fi public uh, hotspot. Uh, free Wi-Fi, maybe public or private, it depends. And the other one is uh, the 4G connection. So the two paradigms. You know, in one paradigm, I pay everything. In the other one, I, uh, I do not. But uh, Italy is one of the most advanced countries in the world for mobile communication. Uh, so my ideal world would be a world uh, full of free Wi-Fi hotspot, but I think uh, we cannot, uh, uh, it, it's, it's really difficult to sustain this model, especially in Italy. Uh, in fact, customers like very much uh, broad, uh, mobile connection, even mobile broadband for home, Vodafone, access point and things like that. Uh, I, I don't have a solution. It's, it's a big problem. I know because in, it, in Turin we have a fantastic connection, 3G and also somewhere Wi-Fi, but I live, uh, for example, in Rome in this. I, I've been living in Rome. It's even worse. I travel a lot around Italy in schools, for example, and it's nothing. I mean, really, nothing. So. Uh, I, I'm not sure that uh, in Italy the situation is uh, um, it's, uh, worse uh, than other countries, actually. I think that there are many, many places, even in the United States, where you don't have a connection, or in Germany, or in France, in Spain, uh, uh, a part of maybe, I don't know, the Lithuania and Estonia country that are, uh, that are different countries. Uh, Probably we need to, 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 to find a, a balancing among the two models. Uh, but to be honest, I think that in Italy, because we have this strong mobile communication system, <clears throat> this paradigm is more uh, willing to, 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 to success, actually.
Thank you.